Hello my friends, it's me, Militant Ginger, and it's been a long time since I last did a, uh, a video diary. Um, I actually did record one, but I never actually uh, posted it. Um, it's December, December the 13th, I think, 2019. Blimey, I think it goes all the way back to August or something the last time I did one of these. Uh, lots been going on. Well, you can see this cool setup I've got. To me, my wife has been doing amazing things, and she's created this this fantastic little nook for me to, to live in and operate. Um, and it's really made a difference. A lot of things have made a difference. Very, very different uh, where I am now than where I am six months ago. Um, which is ironic, because last year, when I made my end of year video, I was saying exactly that. I was like, well, I don't know where I'll be when I make my end of year video, but it won't be here. Um, so I've gone precisely 12 feet upstairs, I think, but uh, it's still good. Okay, so what's been going on? Well, um, I am still plugging away, uh, still writing, still doing stuff, still stressed, but things are coming together in ways that I never expected them to. Um, <clears throat> so what can I say? It's, it's really weird. It's like... It's like all this stuff I always go on about, the law of attraction is actually real. So, um, I stand here today, look, I published a book under my own name, like I always said I would. I mean, it hasn't really gone anywhere, but um, I did it. It's got 48 reviews, like four stars. Um, I have a job now. The last two years, I've been, I've been saying I'm going to go my own way, be a successful writer. Um, and it was really tough because being a writer means you to be a successful writer and a self-publisher is very very achievable um and you but you need to write and publish and the problem is and i think i've spoken about this every time i made one of these videos the problem is it takes three months for you to get paid once your book is successful uh because it's the end of the month and then two months is when amazon pay you um so when I was writing and publishing, the the emphasis was always on the speed of publishing. And not only would you have to publish something that was successful, and you'd have to have the money to invest in marketing it when it first came out. If you ever had a flop or anything like that, then you would be in a really bad situation three months down the line. And so what I kept finding myself doing is I would... Um, see that I was going to have a shortfall and so instead of writing I would focus on doing other projects uh, to bring in money like designing websites or editing books or whatever but the problem was those were so time consuming that I never ended up having the time to write the book which meant the problem that was staring me in the face three months down the line kept reoccurring. I kept being a case of I have to do short term hustles to pay the bills but the thing that's going to make me financially comfortable in the future I don't have the time to do, which means I'm going to have to do the short-term hustles to pay the bills. Which, means, and it was just a loop. It was just a loop, and I wasn't getting anywhere. I wasn't going anywhere, and I honestly did not know what to do about it. Um, and then I got the opportunity to take a job, which is a, the best job in the entire world. So um, I'm not going to go into too much specifics on, on YouTube, uh, but I get to write about a really really cool company and specifically about what they do in terms of like charity and philanthropy and stuff like that and I get to travel around and write about that and that's awesome that's amazing that's amazing I love to write about stuff I'm writing about a company that's doing really good things I get to travel around to locations and this is the interesting thing they're not locations like tourist locations or anything like that that I was in Michigan last week so it was a you know a rundown town on Lake Michigan but for me as a writer this is fascinating because I get to go to places I never would have gone to before but the places that the characters in my books wouldn't have it because I tend to write about bikers from humble backgrounds and things like that so it's been amazing and it's one of those things where, where years ago I dreamed of being in a situation where I was a writer and I got to travel around to all sorts of places and see things and do interesting stuff and look boom there we go that's suddenly what happened. And it makes me think that so much, when I get my head together and decide what it is I want, 
I always end up getting exactly what I want. I don't want much. I don't want to be a millionaire or anything like that. I want to be a writer. And I want to tell stories and stuff. So that's been an amazing thing to happen. And it's taken the heat off us. Not completely. But it's made everything a lot more sustainable. There are a lot of different challenges that, that I'm facing through there. I'm trying to do my best to, to overcome those. But it's been fantastic. Uh, the second thing is I kind of had an epiphany yesterday when I was walking the dog around the lake. I heard somewhere, somebody said, you know, if you are ever in a tense situation and you're stressed about something, you think about it. Is it going to matter in five minutes? Is it going to matter in five days? And then you think, is it going to matter in five years? What is it that you can do when you are faced with a, a series of choices to make your next five minutes the best they are, the next five days the best they are, or the next five years the best they are. And it's been interesting. My biggest problem is the fact that I have stretched myself too thin. I am stretched doing all sorts of things that I don't necessarily want to do. And I struggle with it because my brain is one of these things where I get super focused on one particular thing. And I could do that for 12 hours and forget to go pee. But uh, when there's something I'm not so interested to do, or when there is like even the most minor hiccup in actually getting to do it, I really struggle, and I think that's one of the reasons why I've been so miserable for so long. It's just uh, I've been trying to do the stuff that I don't want to do, and I had to sit down. Well, no, I didn't sit down. I was walking around the lake. I had to think about it very seriously. I was like, okay, which choices can I make that are going to, you know, what are they going to make? What are they going to change about my life in five years' time? And the one thing overriding was the fact that writing is the thing I do best. It's the thing I enjoy best, and it's the thing I make the most money at. And if I want to have the life that I want to have, which is where, you know, writing and maybe working this company and traveling are the two things that I devote, you know, my, my career to, and that gives me enough spare time to spend the rest of my time with the family and doing cool stuff, then how am I going to get there? fact is I have to write and it's difficult because I have all these little like baby birds saying you need to finish this project you need to do this you need to do that and I've spent I've always been very reactive and I've always been um, you know giving oil to the squeakiest wheel and I've always been letting my writing fall by the wayside for more urgent things for chasing money trying to get bills paid and things and I can't do that I have to spend three uncomfortable months, fortunately they're not going to be as uncomfortable as they could be, getting my writing back on track, and my writing needs to be my focus. This morning I got up at five in the morning, I didn't write very much, God, it was just, it just felt amazing, I'm writing a book at the moment that I'm just so invested in, and it's, it's funny, I read about the flow state, and that's where, you know, you get super focused on something, and Somebody said the thing about the flow state is it's when your brain releases like all of the five different chemicals that affect mood, like dopamine and serotonin and other ones I can't even remember. And the only time your body does that is when you're in this like intellectual flow state. And I can get there in there when I'm writing and it's just like amazing. Time stands still. At the same time it's like super accelerated. It's like I'm in a different world and I just feel amazing. I enjoy it so much. And it, it, the reason you enjoy it so much is because it is like taking a hit of the most powerful drug in the world, like heroin, um, cocaine. All of these drugs are designed to make your brain like release certain combinations of these chemicals. But the only thing make all five of them come at once is when you're in the flow state. It's like whatever drugs you take to make yourself feel better... Uh, at the end of the day, they are chasing after a state that you can only achieve by, like, fully immersing yourself in the thing that you are most passionate about. And I'm like, that's what I have to do. I have to, to look at the things that I enjoy and that I am passionate about. And to be honest, those are writing and my kids. And that's it. I love spending time with my kids. I love doing stuff with my kids. I love writing, I love telling stories, I like walking around the lake, I like doing exercise, I like fiddling around with old cars. These are the things that fill my life with joy. 
and I have allowed all sorts of other bullshit to take over and stop me enjoying these things. And the irony is that I know for a fact, because writing has been the thing that has given me the most money in a single month than anything else, that I know for a fact that, you know, the thing that, the, the, the group of things that I enjoy doing most in the world that give me the most pleasure are also the things that are gonna make me financially stable and being able to live the life that I've dreamed about. And it's, I can see it. And I think I'm still short on how to get there. I think you have to take a leap of faith. But at least I see it. At least I see it. I see the path that I need to take. I need to, to get my writing going and flowing. And I just need to approach it with a single-minded purpose. And as I said, you need to take a leap of faith. And I swear, there's this thing called the great narrative. Just like this story, it's... It's, it's about taking a leap of faith. Right now my life is like, well, do you want to be safe? Do you want to be secure? Do you want to get your bills paid? Do you have to feed all these little baby birds who are going beep, 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 beep? And it's like, if you are super bold and you take a leap of faith, even though you know that you don't see everything that you, you want and everything that keeps makes you feel secure by following that path, if you follow that path, the universe will deliver what it is you want. But the universe is trying to say to you, you have to make, take that leap of faith. You have to believe in yourself enough to, to jump out of the airplane and sew your parachute on the way down. And that's what I'm struggling with. But that's where I am, and that's what I'm going to try and do. So, uh, yeah. But it's, I'm in a good place. I think I'm in a good place. Or I'm in a much, much, much better place. The other thing that has been really interesting to me is I've been getting a lot more into mindfulness. And it does make you realise how powerful or destructive your own thoughts are. I think we get conditioned growing up into thinking things the way they are. Um, and even down to like the physical exterior material world and the, the world that goes in on in our brains or on in our consciousness we think of them as two separate things but I don't necessarily think they are the dumb brain studies where it's like if you imagine yourself in a really scary situation the same parts of your brain light up as if you are actually in a scary situation because your brain can't differentiate between what you imagine and what is real and then I'm like where, where does that barrier flow? Where does it stop? And then I'm like, I, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting because it makes me realize that your brain has a hugely powerful impact on the exterior world. Not so much that your thoughts could make things happen, but your thought, if you train your brain correctly, you can interpret things differently. And this whole thing with mindfulness, I used to think it was kind of like hippie crap, this whole meditation thing. But mindfulness is when you stop letting your bro you stop listening to that voice in your head and i think the voice in your head sometimes is useful and sometimes it's not you stop that and you just focus on breathing focus on where you are and i've been working on that every time i walk around the lake with a dog i try and do that and it's kind of remarkable because suddenly it's like it's like uh with your own brain you can use so much of your brain power focusing on your bullshit little drama that's going on inside your head that you don't even notice the world that is around you. And then when you make a conscious effort to be mindful, so for me that's just, I, I silence that voice in my head and I focus on my breathing or I focus on something else. It's amazing because the whole world opens up like in technicolor, like that scene in The Wizard of Oz where everything's in black and white and suddenly it's all in color. And it just makes me realize that the things you focus on are the, you can control what you focus on. Now, the world is what it is, but the world is so infinitely huge that, that at any one point in time, you can't even register everything that's happening in it. When you can stop right now and focus on like the noises that you hear. I can hear this little fireplace whirring, and I can hear the cars outside, and I can hear the dog snoring. And normally when I'm wrapped up in my own bullshit drama in my head, I don't hear that. And, you know, you can 
chase hypothetical scenarios in your head. I have hypothetical arguments with my wife in my head that haven't even happened, and I get, you know, upset by them. I get a headache, and I get stressed and sweaty and angry, and you realize that, what am I doing? I'm like, I'm creating a nightmare scenario for myself in my head that doesn't even exist. It's pretty intense. It's pretty intense, but it's good. I feel like I'm, I don't know, I feel like I'm figuring things out in a way I never have before, but at the same time it's frustrating because I'm like freaking 40, not well, 41, as my son reminded me the other day. Surely I should have figured this out before, but I don't know. Anyway, I just wanted to do a quick catch up. Uh, I was going to read a chapter of my book, but uh, I keep getting disturbed. I think I'll do that later. Anyway, uh, it has been nice to chat. I will catch up with you later, but uh, yeah, things are moving in the right direction, and long may it stay that way. Cheerio.